This is the cabin in the Poconos that we Monroe's seriously refer to as our home away from home. It was purchased at great personal sacrifice over the last 10 years, and now we uh, weekend there whenever possible. Oh, Lydia's there now with her grandmother, a fairly decent woman, the mother of Ellen, my wife, who's downstairs now preparing to leave for the station, where she'll catch a train for Shimkus Lake, near whose greasy shores the cabin is located. John, did I hear the cab? Uh, yes, dear. You'd better go downstairs and ask him to wait. I mean, it's not necessary. They don't mind waiting. Their profit margin in waiting time far exceeds that of time in transit. John, please ask him to wait. Yes, dear. Hello, cab. Good morning. My wife will be down in a minute. Do you mind waiting? Not at all. Our profit margin in waiting time far exceeds that of time in transit. This is my world. Welcome to it. down in a minute. She's on her way to the depot. She going into the city? No, she's going to Shimkus Lake in the Poconos. We've got a little place up there. Did you lose something? Uh, the newspaper. Oh, here, help yourself. Oh, no thanks. Go ahead. It's yours. You're not going with her? Who? Your wife. You're not going with her. Not right away, no. Beautiful. Hmm? Well, you know, your wife is up at your place at the Poconos, and you're down here alone, right? I have work to do. I'll join them tomorrow. I don't blame you. Did you ever hear the story about the disgruntled, frustrated husband and the Portuguese gypsy? No. Blame me for what? For wanting a little free time on your own. Everyone wants to be alone. A man has to spread out. Now, it seems there's this disgruntled, frustrated husband. I don't have to spread out. I really do have work to do. Beautiful. Not every man whose wife is taking a trip to the country goes ape the minute she leaves. Of course not. And then this Portuguese gypsy comes along one day with the beads and the tambourines. And she meets this guy, see? Now, his wife is away on a three weeks vacation up in the mountains. He's got nothing. So he needs her, and he starts swinging. He's nuts about beads, but his wife won't let him wear them. So she said, this is my final offer. $50 a month, and I'll throw in the horse and wagon. And then this gypsy says, $50 a month, and she meets this guy. And he loves beads. That's one of the reasons. Don't you get it? I beg your pardon? $50 a month and I'll throw in... I heard you, and I resent the allegation. Fidelity is very much alive in many parts of Connecticut. I'll thank you to keep your erotic suggestions to yourself. Beautiful. No offense intended. Merely trying to amuse. Uh, nothing. Just thinking. What about? Oh, nothing. Thinking about your leaving and my staying and my being alone. Oh. 
appreciate something like that, they might as well lower him into the sod. Anyway, I don't know why you're looking so self-righteous. I've caught you sneaking a couple of glances at a likely-looking dog going by with a suggestive sort of collar on. John! Stop trying to shift the blame to Irving. He is single, you are not. Well, uh, I'm aware of that. Peeping out of windows. I wasn't peeping. I mean, really, John? Does this sort of thing excite you? For heaven's sake, John. Can we come in? We're the movers. Oh, uh, come in. Come in. By all means, uh, come in. Hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where are you going with that? We're moving it, Chief. We're the movers. Didn't you hear me holler? Can we come in? We're the movers. Yes, of course. But the table stays. The table doesn't go. Okay, Max. Back it up. Hey. What goes, Chief? Sofa? Chairs? Bookcases? Lamps? Uh, I have a list. How about the dining room stuff? Well, well wait a minute. That's, uh, must have left it. Anyway, what's the, what's the rush? I thought you fellas were paid by the hour. Not today. We made a flat deal with your wife. She's tough. Well, you won't get any sympathy from me. My deal's a lot tougher than yours. How about the china? Uh, china? Yes. Well, what about the cooking utensils? Cooking utensils. That's a tough one. I'll have to think about that. He has to think about that. Excuse me. Well, that's the mail. I think we blew it, Max. At eight bucks an hour, this was the big hit we've been waiting for all our lives. Oh. Ellen? Ellen? Me? Mrs. Bessinger? Lydia, Mrs. Passenger. Mrs. Passenger? Now, how did that happen? Oh, well. I'll be back in a minute. What's the matter? What is it? We want to know what else goes. Did you find a list? No, no, I'm afraid I, uh, I've lost it. Mr. Have a heart, huh? Well, we should have been out of here already. Um, take the cooking utensils. Which ones? Uh, look, I don't care. Pick a few things, whatever you think she'll need. Sure. Come on, Max. You probably smell better than any man I ever met. Thank you. It's okay. And hey, what about the trunks, buddy? What? The uh, trunks. Uh, trunks? What trunks? Your wife mentioned trunks. Oh, yes, uh, the steamer trunks. They're in the bedroom. They're packed and locked, ready to go. Wonderful. Come on, Max. Do the binoculars go? 
Binoculars? No, they don't go. I knew it. I've thought it all out very carefully. Keeping this mail or destroying it is a felony. Sneaking across the street and stuffing it in her mailbox when she isn't looking is childish. And waiting until Ellen gets home is cowardly. So, in view of the facts, I have decided... Women's? Uh, yes, I should think so. You want the white or the blue? The blue or the white? Take the blue to the mountains. With all that snow, you got enough white. All right. Towels? Yes. You want the yellow with the red flowers or the burgundy with the white borders? I don't know. I would think probably... Uh, will you trust me? Of course. I wouldn't disappoint you. Come on, nice. I'll take the bathroom, and I'll get the towels in there. Okay, I'll get the linens, but Max, don't do it, all right? As I knew it would be. Do you think it terrible of me coming over here like this? Well, not at all. I was just on the point of going over to see you. I suppose you want your mail. My mail? <laughs> How delightful. You had another reason? I want you. Am I a fool? Not at all. Yes, of course, it's my imagination. Did you think I was kidding when I told the cab driver about fidelity in Connecticut? A man just doesn't behave like this. Well, for heaven's sake, I'll prove it to you. You see? Now, let's try and have a sense of humor about this, hmm? You watched me this morning, John. I knew you were watching me. I always watch you, every chance I get. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. All this time, never being able to... Oh, just knowing you through your words and your cartoons. Oh, those precious words. Those wonderfully funny cartoons. I just love the idea of there being two sexes, don't you? Oh, passionately funny, John. Oh, take me. For heaven's sake, take me. How about the kids' room? The kids' room. What do you want to take from the kids' room? Bed, table, chair, toys? I, I can handle this one myself, Max. Go, go. Uh, no, no, thank you. I, I think she has quite enough of everything. You mean we're finished? Yes, I'd say you're finished. Max. Max, we're free! We're free! Messenger. Good evening, Mr. Monroe. Well, I'm so glad I was thinking of you. Well, I, I hope you don't think I'm too presumptuous. <laughs> Not at all. Please come right in. Well, I've, I've been watching you through the window since Mrs. Monroe left and, well, black coffee this morning for breakfast and no lunch, and I know you haven't had any dinner. Well, so the secret's out. I'm not a kitchen man. <laughs> I won't tell a so, but... Uh, just between the two of us, the quiche Lorraine that I made for dinner is delicious. Can I tip you? You most certainly can, and you most certainly do. 
How utterly charming of you. Of course, you'll join me. <laughs> well, that would be very nice. Please make yourself comfortable, dear lady. I shall get some plates and wine and return instantly. Nearly everyone has them, but how many people are willing to admit it? Kind of fun, too, when you get the hang of it. It's all right here in the fingers. A good sharp snap will do it every time. Turn it on. Okay? Turn it off. Nothing to it. Gone. Oh, almost forgot. Come back. Come back, wherever you are. See? I hope you like it. That's pretty important to you, isn't it? Well, yes, of course. Well, I mean, when a woman admires a man as much as you have admired me, Pleasing him becomes somewhat of an obsession, wouldn't you say? Uh, Mr. Monroe, I'm afraid perhaps you've misunderstood my, um... Call me, John. You may touch me if you like. Kiss me if you must. <gasps> Did you blow in my ear? Well, just a little bit like that. Oh! <laughs> well, Mr. Monroe, I am really surprised at you. I mean, just because a woman feels a little friendly, neighborly interest and wants to share her dinner is no reason well, for you to... for heaven's sake. If you're going to get out of hand, goodbye. What was that? Well, for heaven's sake. I, I just thought this was a nice opportunity for us to get to know each well, other better. Well, for heaven's sake, Will I... you stop saying that? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please, uh, forgive me. I, I humbly beg your pardon. You just don't give a girl a chance. Well, I... What I did was unforgivable. Well, it's it's not that you're unattractive, and, and I know Prude, heaven knows, but well, no girl likes to be leaped at. Oh, dear, I, I think I better go home and change. Yes, that's a fine thing to... And I, I know you wouldn't prefer to forget this entire unpleasant incident, and I don't blame you. Well, it really wasn't all that unpleasant. Thank you, you're very gracious. I, I was more surprised than anything else. I'd give anything if it had never happened. I'll tell you what. Why don't you come over in about oh, 15 minutes and we'll start all over again? <laughs> well. I didn't know you were here. <laughs> That's obvious. Of all the disgusting, shocking demonstrations. I can explain everything, given time. To think I came back because I thought you were lonesome. I felt guilty worrying about you. How horribly humorous. Oh, but please, let me explain. It was nothing. I shouldn't believe my eyes, my ears, John. At least give me credit for more intelligence. I thought it was my imagination. Imagination. I heard all that dialogue. Why don't you come over in about 15 minutes and we'll start all over again? I never intended to go. Even my imagination doesn't go that far. My imagination does. Ellen. Let me pass. I'm leaving for good. Ellen, I won't let you. You can't stop me. I don't believe this. You're making a big thing out of nothing. Nothing? You stand here before me and dare to call it nothing? You and I have thought differently about a great many things, John, and I've tried to understand you. Well, this is something I refuse to put up with. Hello. I've been waiting for you. I thought you would be. John, I will never forgive you for this. Ellen! You call that Quiche Lorraine? Are you all right? I'm not speaking to you.
I had a feeling that might be the case. Hello? John, dear, it's Ellen. Are you all right? Oh, Ellen. <laughs> uh, fine, dear, just, uh, just fine. Did you eat? I know you didn't eat. Well, I, ha I had a great lunch and uh, a light supper. You know what kind of a kitchen man I am. Tell you what, you just relax and I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, hmm? All right, dear. Good night. Good night. <sighs> Heaven knows I've been a good wife to you, John. You know perfectly well I've always tried to be considerate. Oh, stop! Hey, 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 h